Hello friends, today we're going to be jumping right back into our slime phone tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of generating massive energy with nuclear reactors. But before we begin, I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Every time someone does, YouTube gives me a notification about it and it just makes my day. Also, we just hit 100 subscribers and I, I cannot begin to explain how incredibly grateful I am to all of you. So thank you so much for subscribing. Our link to our new Discord is in the description if you want to join that. I'd love to start getting to know all of you. Just thank you so much for all your support. And if you're not subscribed, if you could please consider checking to see if you're subscribed, it would mean the world to me. It's completely free, it only takes two seconds, and if you want to unsubscribe later, it's totally okay. Thank you all so much for helping to change my life one sub at a time. All right, so our nuclear reactor is on the second page of our energy and electricity section in our slime fund guide, right here. It produces a whopping 512 joules per second while running. Each fuel varies in how long it lasts, boosted uranium lasting the longest at 25 minutes, followed by uranium at 20 minutes and neptunium at 10 minutes. Not only is the nuclear reactor an extremely powerful generator, we also need it in order to be able to craft boosted uranium and enrich nether ice, as the only way of getting plutonium is by putting neptunium in the nuclear reactor. And the only way of getting neptunium is by doing the same with uranium. If you're not clear on how to get uranium, be sure to watch the video here. Our crafting recipe for the nuclear reactor is actually incredibly cheap, especially when compared to the energized solar panel, which produces less than half of the power. Though it does include some rather expensive materials, notably two blistering ingots, a carbonato edged energy capacitor, and three reinforced plates. The lead ingots not that bad and the cooling units also very easy. The key difference is in the surrounding infrastructure. Solar power requires nothing but an energy regulator to be able to function. Nuclear power, however, is not that simple. First off, nuclear reactors must be completely surrounded by water in order to function. So in order to do that, I've done a little 5x5 five five with glass and we're going to build it up to 3. And we need to place water source blocks on all of the blocks. So we can see here, everything's water source. And we make sure to do that with the middle layer and with the top layer. Now we can go ahead and place a block here place our nuclear reactor and destroy this block, it'll become a water source block as well. As you can see, the entire three by three cube centered on the reactor is composed of water source blocks. Next, in order to run, the nuclear reactor requires a radioactive fuel. We can't use cargo to put it in directly if we wanted to automate it, as that would require clearing some of the water. As a result, we have to make a reactor access port, which we can find in our cargo management section in our slime fund guide and we need to place the reactor access port three blocks above the reactor, just like this. Now, as you can see, we click on it and we can see that the reactor is detected. And if we click on that, now we're in the reactor's GUI. Now, if we're doing it manually, we can always just click on the nuclear reactor itself. Now, of course, we need an energy regulator to be able to start up any generator, so we can just place that right there. And as you can see, I have my hazmat suit on. Now, we, before we start up our reactor, we can see that we have a focus on electricity or production. If we have it on electricity, it means that the generator will not function unless the circuit it's connected to needs power. Now, it won't stop functioning midway through a production, so it'll still finish it off. If it's on production, that means it's gonna run all the time as long as it has fuel. Now, if we start up our reactor like this, put the uranium in and it explodes. Or more appropriately, it turns into a block of obsidian and plays an explosion sound. It's gone and uh, there's, there's no getting it back. Why did this happen? Because our nuclear reactor also requires a constant supply of cooling cells in order to function without exploding. Cooling cells, which we can find in our technical components section, right here, reactor coolant cell. We get it just by freezing blue ice and don't craft the blue ice. You can actually just freeze packed ice into blue ice and freeze regular ice into packed ice. You can also freeze water into ice. Imagine that. While these cooling cells aren't terribly difficult to make, the quantity required is where things get tricky. For every 20 minutes of runtime, which is how long a single uranium will last inside of a nuclear reactor, the reactor will require and consume 100 cooling cells. That means that each reactor uses 300 cells per hour or one every 12 seconds. Don't let all this scare you off though. Reactors are perhaps the cheapest source of energy. And while setting them up can be a pain, it's definitely worth it for the sheer amount of energy that can be produced. As you can see, now we have our 100 reactor coolant cells and our one piece of uranium. We can just put our reactor coolant cells in here. We can't shift click them in because then it'll go into the fuel slot. And we place our uranium in. 
and it's producing and consuming our reactor coolant cells. We can see how much of the coolant cell has been used by this percent right here. In any case, now you know the basics of how nuclear reactors work. So stock up on your blistering ingots because in episode 17, I'm gonna be showing you how to completely automate nuclear energy to produce anywhere from 2,048 joules per second to tens of thousands and beyond. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you found it helpful, please subscribe. It's free, it takes two seconds, and it helps me out a ton. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.